Hey, uh, hi everybody. Uh, so, uh, very excited to go live uh, today for this Android uh, AMA session. Um, so, yeah. hi folks. Uh, so, we'll talk about uh, today uh, any and every question that uh, any one of you has uh, about Android. So, you know, uh, comments are open for you guys. I'd already posted uh, about uh, this session uh, on some of my social uh, feeds. So there are some initial questions that I got already uh, on, on DMs as well as on uh, comments on those uh, posts and uh, we can start uh, talking about those. And then as uh, questions uh, start coming in, I would uh, love to take up those questions and, and we can uh, start discussing about those things, right? Um, so uh, I think uh, one of the first uh, pieces that uh, a lot of people uh, asked me about was uh, essentially uh, that that a lot of people ask about Android development these days is whether we should go with a native Android development, uh, we should do uh, Kotlin, or whether we should uh, you know uh, go with uh, one of these uh, you know uh, hybrid frameworks like Flutter or React Native. So I think maybe that's one of the uh, questions that we can pick up first. And in fact, that's the first few questions that have come. Dakshdeep and Akash have already said the same thing. So we can definitely uh, pick up probably Akash's questions Flutter or Kotlin. Um, so uh, let's let's uh, talk about that and let's talk about. So there's a lot of nuance to that. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, job market speaking, I think that's that's what a lot of people ask about. So job market wise, uh, the maximum number of jobs that are there, I think 90% of the jobs out there in the market uh, are in native Android development, which means that it's going to be in Java and Kotlin. Okay. Now uh, that's the market situation as of today. Uh, Flutter uh, is definitely growing. Uh, by the way, React Native is also there. Okay, so it's, don't forget that React Native is also there. React Native, uh, the kind of apps that React Native was used on uh, largely, uh, today a lot of this market is getting captured uh, by Flutter. Now, uh, there are uh, particularly new startups where having separate Android and iOS teams is uh, difficult. Uh, very early stage startup. That's one of the places where Flutter is uh, getting used. Two, uh, I would say, is uh, agencies. So uh, you know, design agencies, marketing agencies who also make apps for some of their clients or uh, small app studios who make projects for small companies. Right. Uh, that's another space where uh, Flutter is, uh, you know, has become uh, sort of common today. Uh, so coming to your answer, I would say which one to pick and um, a couple of things. Now, if you are proficient already in Java, by the way, okay, and you want to build up a very serious career in mobile development, you know, you want to earn uh, a good bit of money and you want to make a serious, you know, four or five year long career in Android development. Today, the answer to that is uh, still going with uh, Java and Kotlin, right? Uh, Java and Kotlin, by the way, uh, you know, uh, Kotlin is uh, the new way in which apps are made. Uh, but today, uh, if you go for interviews for Android development, you would need to know both Java and Kotlin. It's very important that uh, you understand this, that both Java and Kotlin, uh, knowing them is is uh, important. Okay, uh, that's that's uh, the situation today. Um, now about uh, uh, Flutter, I would say if you're a web developer, uh, say just for example, you're not so well versed in Java, but you're making websites. And uh, sometimes uh, sometimes you make a project and you feel like, okay, can I also would have made an Android app for it or iOS app for it. And uh, just the mobile website would not be sufficient. You might need that app to be on the mobile offline for support or something like that. You can probably pick up Flutter in that case. Dart would be a language kind of easier, more familiar. Well, by the way, Dart is familiar, whether you're coming from Java or Kotlin or coming from uh, JavaScript, it, all of them are very similar languages would be uh, pretty familiar. Uh, what Flutter does not solve very well is, uh, you know, uh, the fact that there are a lot of external libraries for image manipulation, for video processing, uh, for payment ecosystems. So these kind of things, uh, there are a lot of third party libraries. They exist only in Java and in Kotlin. They don't exist in Flutter. So even if you make Flutter apps and you want to uh, connect deep system level uh, things into it, like video encoding, encryption, these kind of things, you have to integrate, then you will have to write some parts of your code in Swift for iOS and for Kotlin uh, in Android anyway, right? But if you're fetching information from an API and just simply showing it on the screen, 
right? A uh, lot of it is just API based current uh, information happening. So if you make a front end for say, uh, even if we talk about Twitter, so some there's Twitter client, you are showing tweets on the screen, something like that. Uh, Flutter is a good framework to come up and uh, build for that. But if you're trying to build something like say TikTok, uh, right? Then uh, handling that video processing, uh, that network pipeline, those things. Again, not saying it's not possible, but it's sort of uh, harder. Even with apps like Instagram, which is actually made in React Native, the image processing parts are written completely in native in iOS and in Android. Okay, so so, so I think that answers the Flutter versus Kotlin question at large. And then unless there are anything more specific in this, I would not be picking up this particular question. Uh, going on to uh, uh, the next question is Raga Bagarwal has said, how to make sure that a layout looks same throughout all devices supported by the app? And are there any tips for that? Now, uh, there is to be an old school uh, thinking, which is you create a, a, a portrait layout and landscape layout, then in portrait, you create a certain width, certain height, these kind of layouts. But the modern understanding of this is uh, that you do how web developers do, how Bootstrap uh, thinks about responsive layouts, right? So uh, you might have two layouts for horizontal and vertical, uh, right, landscape and portrait, but within portrait for different screen sizes, uh, you know, uh, use proportionality based things, like you want first half of your screen to show something, second half of your screen to show something. So you use constraint layout and within constraint layout, there's something called guidelines. So you can create a 0 0.50 guideline, which is at the middle of your screen, half of it, and then you can put items above it and items below it and then uh, so on and so forth. So I think uh, today the conversation moreover is about uh, the proportion of the screen to be used. Do you want like three cards to be shown in the screen or two cards to be shown in the screen? And then, then you just uh, sort of implement that. Uh, don't try to achieve screen specific layouts try to create a proportional layout and then it will work for all screens. That's the modern way of doing uh, apps. Uh, also, uh, one more thing that has happened a lot and people have understood is that people don't rotate their phones a lot unless they're watching media. So if only when people play games and when people watch media, they use landscape, otherwise they're always using portrait mode. So a lot of very popular apps by Google, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, many of these apps, they uh, lock the orientation of the activity to portrait mode, which is perfectly fine for you to do that. You won't want to bother about landscape. Mode. But for tablets, obviously, you will have to bother because for tablets, both the orientations happen. But for mobile, locking to uh, portrait mode is something that's a valid thing that a lot of apps use these days. Okay. Uh, hi, Bilal. Uh, you know, uh, lots of love to you from uh, India as well. Uh, so your question is that uh, uh, whether data structures and algorithms are necessary for Android development and how to use. Um, very important question. Um, so when we talk about data structures and algorithms, it's a broad topic, right? What is needed and what is not needed? So some of the very advanced data structures like, uh, you know, uh, trees, tries, um, you know, red black trees, binary sorted trees, min ha min heap, max heap, uh, you know, say that directed graphs. Now these uh, data structures are used to solve very specific set of problems. Now understanding how these data structures are created, uh, having the ability to manually write these data structures on your own, like you do in competitive programming, that's not needed uh, for Android development, not for any basic level development job actually for backend, front end, Android, any of them, the the ability to implement these data structures of, by your hand manually that's not needed. Okay, uh, conceptually, if you know them, that's good. Uh, but uh, your uh, basic level data structures like uh, you know uh, stacks, queues, linked lists, hash maps, these are definitely needed because on a daily day to day life. When you're implement creating apps, uh, these data structures are getting used a lot. Okay, uh, and uh, arrays and strings. Now, very important is that you understand how arrays and strings are manipulated, how they can be manipulated using iterative recursive ways, and a good understanding of where uh, something like a tree can be used, something like a hash map can be used, something like a stack can be used. Which problem uh, can be best solved by which data structure? That understanding, if is there 
ha- being able to create the data structure on your own uh, without looking up the internet. Those kind of things people generally need for programming interviews. Those are not needed for development. But knowing which data structure is supposed to be used where, that knowledge is definitely going to be very useful. Okay. Uh, hopefully that answers your question. Uh, so uh, Ram Krishna has a question, which is uh, you want to move uh, to uh, dream companies like Uber, LinkedIn, Phone Pay. Uh, that's fantastic. For interviews, how should you prepare? Uh, should you learn newer concepts uh, or, or, or multi-platform? Okay. No, no, interesting. Uh, so newer concepts like Jetpack Compose or Kotlin multi-platform, these are definitely not needed to crack interviews. That's for sure. Okay. So uh, any uh, piece of technology, any new library or new way of development that has not existed for more than two years. Okay. That is not going to be a deal breaker in interviews. It's as simple as that. Big companies don't use uh, new libraries and new frameworks unless they are at least stable version for at least one year old like that. Nobody is using alpha beta level stuff, right? So Kotlin multi-platform today, some companies are experimenting a little bit. Jetpack Compose, some companies are early adopters of it. Nobody is going to not take you because you don't know these things. So from a job change perspective, covering these things are not essential. Okay, very, very important. Uh, Now, what type of company it is? uh, On basis on that, it depends whether you should do lead code or whether you should do side projects. Now, say for example, a company like PhonePay, I would say doing side projects is better. For a company like Uber, uh, doing lead code is better because uh, companies like Uber and a lot of companies like that, which have big workforces, they do not hire for Android developers. They hire for generic SD2, SD3, these kind of roles. For that, uh, and, and after you join, by chance you know Android well, they will put you on an Android project. But if you know you don't know Android well, they don't care, they will put you into a, whatever project needs uh, current, you know, immediately hands are needed. So companies which hire for generic SD roles, their lead code stuff, you know, that's more important than developing your skills. Uh, but but a little smaller mid-sized company like say Zomato, we used to hire for Android developers particularly. Even at Target, we are hiring for Android developers particularly. We are not generic hiring for any developer. So their uh, data sets algorithm-based questions are lesser and platform-specific, topic-specific questions are more in the interview process. Okay. Um, Uh, so I'm going to skip a question, which has come from BMW about SD2 at Google. I think, uh, I might not be the correct person to answer that question as well. And it's not very Android specific. So I'm just going to be skipping over that question. Uh, uh so, uh, Shishak's question is about whether people hire specifically Android only for SD. And I think I just answered that question is that some companies do hire for SDs generic roles and some companies do have for Android specific roles. And if you go and search for, uh, you know, job offers, you will find that there are a lot of engineer, software engineer, engineer level one, level two, these kind of job offers. And there are also Android engineer kind of job offers on the market, right? So uh, generally, the larger the company is, the more generic the role is, right? Uh, Smaller the company, the more specific the role is. If the company has, you know, 5,000, 10,000 employees, engineering employees, then uh, it's most likely more generic. Uh, your topical skills are not so much needed at the interview stage, okay? Uh, okay, sorry. Uh, okay, Coding Cosmos, uh, very interesting question. And I feel like a lot of people uh, come up with questions like this, that you're in the fourth sem and uh, we've been doing Android in first sem uh, and, and you're worrying about Fushi OS and it will replace Android. Uh, so this is exactly the effect of hype marketing uh, that it has on young minds of the industry today. Okay, when I was in my fourth sem, I think uh, not fourth sem, maybe at least uh, seventh sem. That's when I first heard rumors about Fushia OS. Okay, uh, that's when I heard rumors. Uh, today it has been four more years since then, and Fushia, apart from a demo on Google Home device, has not you know uh, come out. Now. Uh, Kotlin, uh, people say that Kotlin with a new way of development and Java would be obsolete. And they started saying this in 2016. Okay. 
uh kotlin google said officially that they will uh you know make kotlin uh, an official language in 2017 in 18 google said that they will make kotlin as the primary language for which internal libraries and everything is developed 2019 many companies started saying that they are have started to use kotlin internally big companies started saying and i think since 2000 from 2016 and 17 time to 5 years later 2021 is when uh kotlin has actually become mainstream and in most companies more than 50% code is written in kotlin in android today right uh this starting from 5 years back when kotlin first started getting used in production based apps and it was completely interoperable with java okay so fushia replacing android is um uh, i mean this video is going to be there on youtube for a long long time and uh, you know i'm going to be putting my neck out and and i wouldn't want to come back and see this video and see me myself being proved wrong but within the next 5 years i don't see fushia becoming more popular than android replacing android is is not even getting there but fushia being like a serious contender and replacement for android uh is not going to happen within the next 5 years uh, if i take a bet okay so don't uh, get into those hypes and don't try to prepare for a future that's 5 years away okay uh, because you don't know what's 5 years away prepare for the industry today and as the industry will change you will adapt to it that's what everybody does okay people who were hardcore angular developers they adapted to react they have adapted to vue js those same people who are hardcore angular developers might have been sometime back backbone js or knockout js developers people adapt it's not like angular people have become obsolete they have just adapted to where the industry has gone okay uh, and uh, by the way one more thing and uh, this might not sound very sweet and nice coming from me but uh, from first sem to fourth sem uh, you know your android development skills definitely might have improved but production level android apps i'm sure you're not have started making this production language as means having unit test integration test ci cd pipeline working and uh, you know uh, using dependency injection dagger using rx java or maybe these days core routines uh, in place and uh, you know you know all of these things should be happening then only we should say that we are making production level apps so i, I believe that you know just two years of effort uh you still have a lot of gaps to fill uh, in that uh, space okay uh so uh, siddharth has asked k siddharth sai are there opportunities for freshers to get a job as an android developer obviously why not lots of people get uh, you know uh, uh, i think android uh, development jobs as uh, freshers uh, lots of companies hire okay uh by the way even very big companies like google kind of companies uh, there also people are hired for a generic sd role once hired many of them right from day one they are made to work on uh, android or ios or, or web or anything like you know there's no you know guarantee what kind of project you would be given so on bigger companies but at a startup level companies freshers are definitely hired like like at uh, zomato we used to regularly hire freshers uh, in our android team Uh, and similarly, a lot of companies where my friends work, you know, Swiggy is there, Flipkart is there, uh, uh, Urban Company is there, uh, Ghana dot com is there, uh, you know, all of these companies they hire uh, freshers for Android development jobs. Okay. So, Abhishek has said, wait, like, like wait of Android apps or my wait? Should I, should I, should I reduce wait, or, or have you? are you seeing me after a long time on youtube when you seeing i have reduced weight if if that's yes i'm flattered uh, but uh, okay coming on to the next question so himanshu has asked is flutter going to be used by tech giants or startups in the future uh so by the way flutter is used by google to create their own adsense app uh, flutter is used by zerodha which is a big company uh, to make their kite and coin apps uh, right and flutter is used by alibaba to create their dashboard app so flutter has started to be used by some of the uh, bigger companies uh, none of the very big companies have used flutter yet for their main apps uh, primary app nobody has used uh, startups many of them have started using flutter yes uh, right like i said 
if you are mainly doing a api based and ui based project and device hardware level stuff you are not getting into too much then flutter is a good choice to go with and then you can make an api uh, okay, Dipanshu has a question, which is, uh, which has more career opportunities, web development or Android development? Um, in terms of quantity, web development just has like way more number of job opportunities than Android. Uh, it's, it's a bigger domain, it's a bigger field. Uh, also, web is a wide word, right? I mean, you might mean front end, you might mean back end, you might mean full stack. Combining all of those things together, web is a huge domain, right? Uh, today in India, like, come, including service sector, product sector, big company, small company, everything included. If we have 1.5, 1.6 lakh fresh jobs every year uh, in the development space, I think uh, 80 to 90,000 of those would be in the web development space, uh, right? Uh, so, and mobile development space jobs would be 20,000, 25,000 of them uh, in that space. I think the rest of them might be in, in specific like desktop app, security, and uh, you know, uh system administration these kind of things uh so way more number of jobs is there definitely that is more uh but if you look at like uh way the number of jobs with the median salary uh so uh, you know say jobs that pay 10 lakh per annum uh so the competition for a 10 lakh per annum job in Android uh, or mobile development is going to be less than the competition for a 10 lakh per annum job in web development. Uh, that's there. And as you go a little higher in the salary bracket, like a 15 lakh per annum jobs, I don't think there are more 15 lakh per annum web jobs than there are Android jobs. I think there the numbers start getting a little closer uh, to each other. All right. Uh, so that's uh, about a quantity quality assessment on web development versus Android development. Uh, uh, question, where do you think Ionic framework stands when compared to Flutter and React Native? So by the way, Ionic, uh, you know, uh, so Ionic is a little too specific, but Cordova, which is basically running web apps inside Android or iOS app containers, Cordova itself is a framework, which, uh, it's, it's, it's a platform on which the Ionic framework is also made and there are other uh, ways to do it as well. Now. Cordova is actually very big, and in fact, in both Android and iOS app stores, uh, the maximum number of apps are the native apps, like the ones made in Objective-C and Swift for iOS or the ones made in Kotlin and Java for Android. That's the native apps are maximum. The second highest number of apps, uh, you know, are in Cordova in both the platforms. And the reason for that is that there are hundreds and thousands of apps, which basically are the website of that product wrapped into a app kind of container so that locally things can be stored uh, right so uh, ionic actually also is a subset of that problem um, i think uh, compared to native android development and then react native and flutter i think ionic particularly specific specific is going to be a little less uh, quite less uh, but it's not like it does not exist there there is sufficient amount of opportunities in that as well uh, right Uh, could you provide a real-time tutorial for learning Android app? G2, uh, you know, uh, you should see the last video that we published. We, we just published, like, go channel, like, go back a little, you'll find. I did a five-hour video. It was five hours of me continuously coding an Instagram clone. Uh, we will do more videos like that as well. Uh, so definitely check that video out. You would love that video, I'd say. Okay. Um, okay. Um, So Sahil Tanwar has asked, uh, uh, you know, not worked in Java. So if you are not worked in Java, uh, can you start learning Android development from React Native? I, I would say yes, uh, you can. Uh, though I would want to warn you that uh, if you're making bigger projects, uh, then having knowledge of how the Android SDK and Java works is gonna sooner or later uh, come uh, and then become useful, okay? So eventually you will have to learn either Java or Swift or both uh, a little bit to debug some of your uh, issues, right? Um, 
where to start i think there's a free code camp series on react native maybe you can just at least start from there it's a free tutorial and uh, then then see where it goes i think for most people for most things that's what i suggest you know go to free code camp try out the technology see if you're able to get started make the initial project and then you can see there are a lot of you know if there are paid courses if there are books and all of that stuff. okay so the free code free code camp one is the thing i would suggest is the first place you just go and check out Uh, Fenil has asked an interesting question how to implement the driver routing feature in Zomato app. So that's a NP hard problem, traveling salesman problem, right? So it's it's not a very Android specific question. And I would be honest, I wasn't involved in the team that worked on the system. But that's kind of like how the tra traveling salesman problem is solved. It's a subset of that traveling salesman problem. So I think if you Take a look at the traveling salesman problem, and uh, that's something at Scaler Academy in our courses we actually do cover. So you'd probably get a taste of how uh, these kind of algorithms are implemented. Uh, Ayushman has a question. Uh, that you're in 6M and have many other projects, but no work experience, how to get uh, internships at good startups and what should I do? Uh, so first of all, you have to apply to a lot of places. Uh, just a moment. Uh, okay, so you should apply to a lot of places. Uh, at for early stage startup internships a good place to discover uh, some of them would be uh, angel dot co angel list and you can search for some of them there uh, right uh, that that's one place another thing i would suggest is you know get together with some friends of yours uh, and participate in some of the online hackathons where you have to build apps and websites and all that's also a great place where you learn to translate an idea into a project which is uh, kind of very useful and very helpful uh, right what these interviews uh, try to figure out as well when they ask you uh, the questions okay uh, Raga is a question what happens uh, is it sometimes that an application for perf perfectly running on android studio crash out to release as happens because of something called ProGuard and minification so uh, when you make a release mode of your APK, in your early days, you can set uh, ProGuard to false or Minify enabled uh, to false. But that's not a good strategy long term to make you know, production uh, ready projects because obfuscation is important. So follow the uh, ProGuard rules and make sure that all the ProGuard rules are added in your project. Uh, that's uh, one thing, uh, right? and uh, connect your app to Firebase Crash Lightix so that all the crashes that happen on release, you get a stack trace of them so you can start uh, deploying a fix for that. Uh, okay, Manish has a question. How can someone start out in Android development as a pressure in, in COVID times uh, and how many large projects are efficient? So I think, uh, the right um so uh the COVID time uh, uh part is uh probably irrelevant uh right uh because uh, the, the answer is sort of going to be the same whether it's it's because of pandemic or without the pandemic and, and all that um so i would say I mean, go to developer.dino.com, learn the basics and, you know, start building some apps and then start uh, thinking of some projects like a to-do list manager, a scientific calculator, you know, a note-taking app, these kind of uh, projects and, uh, you know, uh, start building something uh, like that. That would obviously uh, be uh, a good way to, uh, you know, learn certain uh, skills in Android development that are needed uh, to be able to build such projects, okay? uh how many large projects i think you should have two three smaller projects that you have built over a you know week or less kind of time and you should have maybe three four uh you know probably contributions to some projects uh you know 
which which are little la- larger uh, in terms or you can probably set up a group of your friends like minded friends and you can set up a open source project of your own as well and and that is something that you can do Okay, so Rushikesh asked about uh, progressive web apps, cross-platform versus native development. Uh, now, progressive web apps are just basically a way to install your, uh, you know, uh, normal web application, add a shortcut to that in uh, your home screen, and do a little bit of local cache and push notifications, but largely uh, they are sort of powerless. Uh, you know, uh, cross-platform versus native, I think I had just discussed already a little bit, the trade-offs come between cost, uh, which is uh, like, uh, you know, about having two teams for different, different uh, native uh, products, or do you have one team which develops the app for both the product, those kind of cost uh, calculations come into the picture, uh, right? Um, so, so based on that, we basically decide whether to go with the cross platform or a native implementation. Ah, Mohit, <laughs> hi. Uh, so, okay. Uh, so my uh, my my first time I saw a big uh, open source project which gave me a very good idea about good architecture was Firefox's Android app, uh, right? Nowadays, Firefox has two three apps. There is the original Firefox Android app, then there's a Firefox Focus app. Uh, those, uh, I mean, you might love to see that and see that project structure, but for little younger people, it might be a little overwhelming. Uh, so, so somewhat on the smaller side, FOSS Asia has got some good Android projects. I think you can go to GSOC and see last year's Android projects and see their GitHub repos, which is a good place to find out open source projects where the architecture is also good, but not so complex that as a beginner, you won't be able to understand it at all. Okay. Uh, Shopify approach, so Aditya Pahilwani has a Shopify approach, KMM for business and React Native for UI. Um, so both are a couple of different things. KMM for business is something that a lot of companies are thinking of doing. We had started thinking of writing our menu logic in KMM when I was in Zomato because that was a very complex piece of logic and we had to replicate it twice. Um, but we did not need depend on a lot of Android or iOS specific stuff to do it. So we thought that we should definitely be able to, uh, I don't know, sort of use it as a, uh, yeah. So, uh, just a second. So, uh, yeah, uh, and, and, you know, uh, we can use it like that. Now, uh, the UI with React Native part is something that some people uh, decide whether you want to have a common UI effort or not. And uh, I think uh, it depends on the kind of team and all you have set up and whether you want to create a common design language and uh, or you do have very strong uh, UI teams on Android as well as iOS already available in your team. Now, if you have that, then you don't, need to create a common effort for UI. Now, uh, React plus KMM uh, is good, uh, though that means that you would need, like uh, for a lot of, uh, you know, for Shopify, uh, this, uh, I think, uh, for Shopify, they would need somebody with React understanding, they would need somebody with KMM understanding, and they would need people with native Android Kotlin and native Swift understanding as well to fix certain uh, features. So that every different technology stack that you keep adding, you need expertise in all of them. And uh, as your apps are bigger and more complex and they are running on lots of different, different devices, uh, then uh, native level knowledge becomes unavoidable and it is needed because there will be certain crashes which happen in the native way. So you'll need somebody with uh, native Android development experience and native iOS development experience to be able to fix those bugs. For bigger companies, I think uh, it it does make sense where common uh, you know common implementations which can be changed quickly by changing 
one implementation you are able to change the ui on both ways those kind of things can happen uh now many uh businesses uh use kmm to make the logically a common while the uis are separate so that's a different part of the problem to be solved and a lot of people are already doing that then a lot of people are also doing this thing is that they are uh, writing the ui in a common framework like flutter or react native and then some uh platform specific stuff like image processing pipelines video processing pipelines they are writing down in uh, native as well uh, right uh, and uh, you know that's uh, kind of the state right now uh, shopify is one of the rare examples who is doing both of those things they are trying to make things common at the ui layer as well and then at the bottom of the business layer or as well they are trying to make things a little bit common uh does the uh, okay so uh, where did i miss the next question so the asks does the associate android developer certification google benefit us while applying for android developer jobs i haven't seen that actually to affect a lot to be very honest uh gives a little bit of foot through the door like if somebody has that associate android developer certification then uh resume uh, shortlisting layer it might help a little bit uh, especially like if you are if your prior work experience is not in an android development role or you are not from a very good college in those cases if that certification is there uh, that helps a little bit if you have already made android projects if you are from a tier 1 or 2 college uh or if you already interned in android development role or you know work in android development role already then you don't need to go for that certification it does not add anything more to value to your profile okay good companies to aim for summer internship android i think that i wouldn't have uh, uh right now any idea of uh mostly you should uh, you know uh check out obviously some of your favorite apps that you use some popular apps and then try out their try to reach out to the recruiters uh, via linkedin and see if their internship opportunities open many companies do not have internship opportunities explicitly mentioned on the internet but if you ask their recruiters and you say that you are good on android development you have made some projects uh, do do you uh, have uh, you know internship opportunities maybe somebody might say yes okay what do you see in an intern for second year pass out uh, second year pass out what do you mean by second year pass out like if you in second year then you are not pass out right uh, <laughs> uh, but but okay fine i will just say that you know if you are in your third year and you want to intern i don't know i mean i don't see i don't want to see lot of skills apart from uh, the uh, the the urge to learn new things and uh, if it's in a startup pitch atmosphere then being a self starter that for every two things every third thing every fourth thing you won't come to your whoever is your internship mentor or your engineer whom you are assigned to you don't just come and bother them you you take a piece of problem given to you and you figure things out on your own as much as possible so that attitude you have that's probably more important uh, that i try to see Okay, Vignesh has asked how to prepare for freelancing and Android development. Uh, portfolio building is important, so go to GitHub, make projects, projects which are finished, okay, end to end, finished. Put up on the Play Store. Uh, get your friends and family to use it. Uh, try to get five hundred thousand or thousand downloads. Even that's fine. but put it on github github should have a read me of that project it should tell what the project uh, was about like you know packaging is very important uh, which helps you build a you know uh, sort of freelance side career for future perspective with android is it better to learn ios or backend um if you're not spent at least 4 or 5 years in android then just continue to spend time in android itself there's a lot of depth to it okay otherwise decide if you really really love uh mobile development right making mobile apps is something that you really passionately fall in love with then maybe learning ios or flutter or react native another framework is uh, sort of uh, helpful Uh, right 
but if you learn back end then you become versatile you can work on projects where both back end and front end are needed and you can work on both things yourself simultaneously together uh, i think an android developer who moves into back end probably adds two very large skill sets which can give like you know career growth wise salary wise better uh, opportunities what right uh this is a small question about target uh, offering summer android intelligence or not so just to uh, answer that question no i think uh, if there isn't uh, right um so uh, this is just full time people are getting hired right now so so just answering that question uh santosh has asked web development or android development for students in 6m uh you know if you're a student i will give you only one advice that is people excel in things that they like uh there is this whole concept japanese concept of finding or ikigai which is uh things that uh, you are good at things that you like and things that you can uh, use to make money or make a career out of okay the intersection of these three things is what you should be doing right that's your ikigai um so uh, you are generally good at uh, certain things if trying to solve problems in that domain keep you up at nights sleep less nights and you and, and you're very passionate about it so uh try out web development and android development both for one one week each see which one excited you see which one is stopping you from going to sleep uh, right uh, so that is is uh, probably very important to discover what you really like once you figure out what you like put all your energy into it you might figure out android is what you like you might figure out web is what you like you might figure out you don't like either of them and you like something else like data science or machine learning well whatever but uh, if you spend some time figuring out what you like that is the best investment of your time and energy uh, right and uh, based on that take a pick don't try to pick web versus android based on which senior said this is supposed to be taken because it has more scope or whether you look at job offers today and you pick that uh, if you are among the top people doing anything you can be very successful and earn a lot of money and then you know um, travel countries and all of that stuff so uh, don't try to optimize for okay this domain has more jobs or this field pays more and all of that stuff uh, pick up which when whichever one you know makes you feel better whichever one you really feel like you like and then you will automatically be very passionate about it automatically learn a lot of things inside it that's going to be important uh by the way just uh, quickly covering uh, arpit uh, you can later on see the video freelancing i just covered a little while back uh XML looks different on different phones. I talked about how these days a constraint layout is used for creating proportional layout files. I use it. You can see that. Uh, what is easier to make? Uh, Eugene has asked. Wallpaper app, Android Flutter Studio, or Flutter? What is easier to make? Uh, I think uh, wallpapers uh, can be. probably easy to make if you just use a pattern based wallpaper or something like that uh, right uh okay Hey, this is somebody from Russia was asking Granny Fox. Uh, uh, so lots of love from India, uh, and and your English is uh, completely perfect. Just <laughs> um, uh, one. Ah, uh, sorry. I think I I lost my battery, my mic a uh, little bit. Um. Uh, 
uh, we have somebody from Nigeria as well. So, so quite quite a lot of international audience they did completely did not expect that. Uh, hopefully, this was uh, good enough information for you folks as well. Uh, though I think my personal experience is more India specific that I'm able to kind of draw from and give you uh, answers from. Uh, so I think on the last questions I would pick up uh, and unless you have more questions you know feel free to throw in but uh, uh, I think we will also start to slowly slowly wrap up uh, our session. So Path Patel has asked how to develop skills for prod level development before getting a job. Uh, uh, do something prod level I think uh, make an app of your own try to put it up on the play store and then open source its code and, and then maybe ask your friends to come and contribute that's one of the best ways to uh you know you know do this uh, and uh, i think uh, setting up ci cd etc using github actions on your side projects and then doing automatic code reviews and all these kind of things uh, you can set up uh, right those things will really help okay uh i'm an android developer but really Uh, Arti Negi has asked whether she should switch to Flutter or not and I think that if you already are a good Android developer, you have made some apps then you can learn Flutter additionally. It's not called switching, it's just adding, broadening your horizons. I have learned Flutter uh, two years back, although I was very successful Android developer at that time. That's just, you know, increasing your, your social presence and, you know, making sure, you know, you stay in touch with latest trends. So for that, you can do that, okay. Uh, should I know testing and CI CD for putting my app on Google Play Store? Uh, Ayushman has asked. Uh, uh, so, yes and no. I mean, you don't need testing and CI CD knowledge to just put the app on Play Store, but if you have gotten an app to a place where you can put it on place to that level of confidence you have gotten out of building apps, then I think, uh, yes, this answers, uh, you know, uh, that, that if you put, if you set up testing, if you set up CI, CD, it will make your life a whole lot easier and uh, it will prepare you for production level stuff that you need to do at jobs. Uh, but it would be great if you have, uh, you know, these skills uh, and, and they help you publish that app much more easily as well. Your, your code base is always tested, you know, and, and uh, you know, your, 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 uh, you know, automatically you can deploy your app to Play Store and as well, those kind of things you can, and you can do. Uh, okay. Uh, so, I don't see a lot of other uh, questions which are extremely pertinent to our today's topic which is about Android development. Uh, uh, sadly, I haven't been able to pick up some questions and I know that, I, I, I want to acknowledge that some which were not so directly related to today's uh, topic or exactly the video that we were trying to do today. So, we have might not have been able to pick those comments as well, uh, but, but uh, anyway. I think uh, I have been able to answer a lot of the questions that have come in uh, and if there are more such questions that uh, people have, you know, uh, feel, feel free to probably, you know, just uh, reach uh, out to Scalar Academy or uh, join our Discord. Uh, we will we'll put the link of that in the description of this bit. You can come to our Discord and there is an Android channel where you can ask uh, some questions. Uh, okay, so that is something uh, that you can do. Okay, uh, so um, any other questions that's coming in? Uh, 
so i think uh, i'll just uh, wrap up at that point uh, because some of the other questions are uh, i think we can take them up in in comments of this video itself uh, some of them are not very directly uh, related as well so we can we can definitely uh, do that you know take them up as uh, comments here and like i said you can join our discord uh, if you want to you know send a you know dm or something on my twitter or something then that's also available but i think one of the best places would be that you join the scalers discord and ask that question the android channel and me or even some other people who know android development can maybe answer uh, those to you okay uh, so 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 i think uh, i think i will just uh, call it a day here i will just uh, wrap things up here and it was uh, great interacting with all of you people uh very very humble to see a lot of people from outside india joining in as well in this i don't know what kind of time zone they might be on uh thank you so much uh, right and we would love to have more such ama sessions on different different topics by more skilled instructors and mentors in in the coming days okay uh i'll take one more question uh, i think uh, you know uh, i'll take just one more question uh, and that question is i think uh, about so i think who has asked this uh, uh, abhishek sharma has asked that uh, i'm new to dependency injection so should i start with uh, dagger or hilt hilt is a wrapper over dagger uh, hilt is not separate from dagger so you need to know dagger to use hilt hilt is just uh, it it reduces the amount of code that you need to write with dagger but hilt is built on top of dagger if you don't know dagger then you don't know how to use hilt okay so i think probably that uh, helps with that uh, misconception there they are not separate vaccines uh, so they are not separate uh, sorry uh, programming languages uh, just uh, some vaccine related thing just popped up here i'm just seeing vaccine pop ups everywhere on my screen these days uh somebody is getting some vaccine and also i, I hope uh, you guys also get uh, vaccinated if you uh, can get book slots and everything uh, just popped up somewhere there my screen uh so yeah uh, if you are uh, you know uh, dagger and uh, hilt are not separate frameworks they are uh, basically uh, hilt is built on top of dagger so uh, yeah um so i guess uh, okay then uh, thanks uh, everybody for the questions uh, you, you guys asked uh, thanks everybody for everybody watched the video if there are further questions you can drop them as comments on this video uh, or you can come to our discord server and you can ask them as well uh, thank you for tuning in uh, have a nice day everybody please uh, you know uh, stay safe uh, you know wear masks and get vaccinated uh, okay um, bye everybody